Right now our robot depends on what is called ambient light to detect information uh, from its surroundings. So what that means is uh, it uses the, the light from the bulb in the room uh, to get a few light rays or photons into its detector and then uh, the more light rays that it receives the higher the value that we see on the serial monitor. Um, if it's closer to the bulb the more the higher the value will be. The, if the bulb's bright it, the number will be higher and if the robot's oriented towards the bulb the number will be higher. But if any of these things are are different, if this distance is bigger or if the bulb is dimmer, it's a low watt bulb or, or maybe it's turned off or if the robot is let's say oriented in the direction off to the right here, it's pointed that way, then that number is going to be lower. Now while this system does give us information about the the environment surrounding the robot, it doesn't give us everything we need to know. For example, if we had a wall here, the robot simply wouldn't detect any light. Now if the robot's not detecting light, it could be for a variety of reasons. It could be that the robot is in a dark room, it could be that the light again is dim, it could be that there's a wall in front of it. It's hard to say what's causing the robot to see a low value. So what we're going to do is uh, turn the system on its head by giving the robot a flashlight. And with the flashlight what it's going to do is generally register low values on the detector. It's just going to shoot light beams out in front of it and the detector's not going to see too much action. But if we come up against a wall, then what will happen is we'll, ac we'll actually get a lot of reflection. And this reflection will bounce back into the detector and we'll get some of this. The, the reading will actually become higher. So as we get closer to a wall the reading gets higher and we can tell how close we are to the wall. If the reading's low we can uh, deduce that either there's no wall there or it's very far away. So this gives us uh, much more information about our surroundings so that we can actually get a uh, nano mouse to navigate a maze. To add this functionality to our nano mouse we're going to pass a little bit more information to the sensors class when we create it. Uh, the first thing we're going to add is a 4, indicating pin 4 is our left emitter. That's in the first position. The second position is the left detector, followed by the front emitter, and then the front detector, and finally the right emitter, which is pin 2, and the right detector. Because this isn't a conventional, a conventional way to pass constants to a class, and because it's a uh, getting complicated, we're going to just write some notes which are the first position is the left emitter followed by the left detector followed by the front emitter and I'll put some dot dot dots here to indicate that that is uh, what's happening. Whoever's reading our code should have the point by that time. Now I have to change the template in the same way so because the first uh, position is reserved for the left emitter. I'm going to put that right here. Followed by the left detector, the front emitter, followed by the front detector, and the right emitter, followed by the right detector. Next, I have to create a new function called configure and what this will do is it will configure how these emitters function how these emitters work and the first thing I need to do is set them to output because these are digital pins that can either accept information or uh, control something such as an LED or a motor. We're going to set it to control something. We're going to set it to send information out. We're going to set it to output. 
after I set all of the emitters to output, I then need to turn them on. And I'm going to set, do that by saying digital write and then the emitter. And I'm going to set it to high. Once I do this, I need to add one last line of code to my main file. And that is uh, when I define what these pins are doing, I'm also going to call my sensors.configure function, which here will set them all, all those pins to output and set them high so that they're shining uh, infrared light which the detectors can now detect. I'm going to go ahead and test this code. And if I've done everything correctly, when I hit the button, I should see that as I put my hand closer to the sensor, the number actually gets higher. If I put my hand closer to the right-hand sensor, the number gets higher. And if I do the same thing on the left-hand side, the number will get higher. So this is the exact opposite behavior of what we observed when we initially programmed our robot to uh, detect light.